very good evening to all our viewers. This is News First for the People and welcome to tonight's edition of Primetime News coming to you live from Anusra Studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudan Naik and let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Postal voting postponed indefinitely due to the delays in printing ballot papers. Funds and lack of police protection cited as reasons for the delay in printing ballot papers. Local government polls interrupted. Again, a new circular issued by the Minister of Finance. Violating the constitution will lead to legal action. A warning from the opposition. 700 million of taxpayers' money to be lost under the guise of wasted crude oil. President says IMF funds will come in March. Sri Lanka, the election headquarters. And now the story is in detail. Sri Lanka's Finance Secretary Mahinda Siddhivadana has officially communicated to the National Election Commission that there are serious issues with regard to providing funds for the local government election given the economic crisis in the country. The chairman of the National Election Commission, Attorney Nimal Punchheva, told News First that a new circular has also been issued, noting that the Finance Minister's approval is required for non-essential expenses. The Finance Secretary was accompanied by two other officials from the Finance Ministry for a meeting with the National Election Commission on Friday. Chairman of the National Election Commission, Attorney Nimal Punjiheva, said that the Finance Ministry officials had noted that as per the circular issue to cut down on government expenditure, funds can only be allocated for essential requirements in the country. During this meeting, it was also revealed that on the 14th of February 2023, a new circular had been issued noting that the approval of the Finance Minister, who is President Ranil Vikrama Singha, is necessary for all non-essential expenses. The Finance Secretary had told the National Election Commission that there are issues in providing funds for the local government election given the current situation. It was also noted that the necessary steps with regard to an election will be taken after the petition filed against holding the local government election is taken up at the Supreme Court on the 23rd of February 2023. The president who is also the finance minister is using his immunity to stay away from this. However, when he loses that immunity, we will take legal action against the attempt to take away the people's right to vote. It is unconstitutional to take away the right to vote of 22 million people. We will ensure the maximum punishment is given for that offence. The National Election Commission announced on Friday that postal voting for the 2023 local government election will not go ahead as scheduled. Postal voting for the local government election was expected to take place on the 22nd, 23rd and 24th of February. The NEC in a statement said that the postal voting for the 2023 local government election was postponed indefinitely as the government printer had failed to deliver the postal voting ballot papers on time. The statement added that the new dates for the postal voting will be announced later. The government printer elaborated once again on the delay in printing material required for the postal vote. The postal vote printing process has commenced and until now we did not receive the proper police protection. It is essential to obtain police protection to ensure efficiency and the accuracy. All other matters are complete except for the posters and the results document. In addition, we only have to print the ballot papers. Earlier we used to obtain a 50% advance for the printing process. This 50% is for the estimate of 400 million rupees, which would be an advance of 200 million rupees. We won't only given 100 million rupees. The Treasury only gave 40 million rupees. Yet we have completed the work to the value of 200 million rupees and we only have to print the ballot papers. The chairman of the election commission had informed the IGP to provide security. However, no police protection was provided. We cannot dispatch the material without police protection. <laughs> Oh, 
ඕන වෙලාවක අපි සූදානම් දැන් අද පොලිසිය ආරක්ෂාව ලැබුණොත් It would be difficult. We need around 20 to 25 days for this. If I am told that the election is on the 9th, I can get those who are willing to work 24 hours and get it done. There are circulars for that as well. One can work for 21 days at once. I can't tell you what to check. 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 Are they doing the right thing today? The government printer says she is not afraid, and we are not afraid as well. However, we fear the law and the land and the constitution. It does not matter if she is fearless or not. She is bound to protect the constitution. If she violates the constitution, she will end up in jail. Legal action was filed against Neil Hapuhinna Circular, and these two will also face the same. The finance secretary has provided 100 million rupees. He should have made it clear that the budget provisions cannot be released. He has wasted 100 million rupees and needs to be penalized. How did he allocate over 300 million rupees for the Independence Day and for the upcoming Perahara? Do not take this lightly. As the SJB spokesperson, I am announcing the official position of the SJB. If the government is allowed to illegally delay the election, it will directly impact all future elections. Any future ruler will be able to use this process. Everyone must rise up against this process. We urge the government to conduct the election as per the constitution and as per the election law. The question on printing ballot papers must be asked from the government. However, the election commission must decide on the date of the election. The SLPP is ready. We are not afraid of the elections. When Mahindra Rajapaksa was in power, we knew we would lose the election in the north. But we went ahead with the election. We as a party do not violate the democratic rights. The president is a saboteur who is trying to take away the democratic right of the people to exercise their vote. He is hindering the election process. He is summoning the public officers to his office and intimidating them. Democracy is not something that applies when you win an election. Rana Vikram Singh has hatred towards the people for making him lose. He is seeking revenge from the people since the day he became president. His commitment is to the 134 people in parliament who made him president. The Samagi Jana Balavega handed over a letter to the European Union delegation in Sri Lanka informing them of attempts being made by the government to postpone elections. We demand an end to this injustice. We would like to tell the finance secretary and the other officials if they become party to this, we will take legal action against all of them. Ranil Bikrama Singha must understand that if he commits an unconstitutional act, the day he leaves, he will be brought before the law. The government printer is advised not to mislead us with lies. Every single officer and politician committing an unconstitutional act will be brought before the law. Former Deputy Minister Mayan Mustafa was stripped of his civic rights for seven years by a court order on Friday. Colombo High Court Judge Aditya Patabadige sentenced former Deputy Minister Mayon Mustafa to six months in prison and imposed a fine of 500 rupees for providing a bribe to secure the support for a candidate at the 2010 presidential election. The Attorney General indicted former Deputy Minister Mayon Mustafa at the Colombo High Court on charges of having offered 4,200,000 rupees to National Freedom Front spokesperson Mohammed Muzamil as a means of inducing him to support then common opposition presidential candidate General Sarat Fonseca, who was later promoted field marshal at the 2010 presidential election. More local, international, and sports stories come your way on the other side of this short commercial break. Stay with News First. We will be right back. News First. Main sponsor. Durden's Hospital. Dedicated to you. Experience the best in healthcare at Durden's Hospital. 
we continue to evolve into a purpose-built hospital built to deliver world-class care. Trust in us for all your health care needs. Dadden's Hospital, dedicated to you. Siwutesa Sisara, Imasa Denuatra, Dorin Dora Evita, Nangatagos Vimasami, Etta, Eti Setium Deca, Janata of the Samaka, Jana Duke Nivana, Hamukiba, Gummet Rata Nagana. Jana Paura. During a discussion held at the Presidential Secretariat on Thursday, the President announced that the IMF EFF loan is expected to be received in March. President Ranil Vikramasinghe announced that an international monetary fund EFF loan is expected to be received in March. The president made this comment while speaking to small and large-scale rice mill owners. The discussion was aimed at identifying the issues faced by small and large-scale rice mill owners and finding solutions to resolve them. The relief that we can provide for this season is very limited. We are in a tough position and we must work accepting the fact that the people are in hunger. Some businesses have wound up and the middle class have also lost their jobs. This year is going to be tough. Thereafter we will receive relief. We need to focus on reducing the farmers' production cost. We need to work together to boost the production. Furthermore, we hope to receive the IMF assistance by March and then to reduce rates. If we can reduce inflation and interest rates, we can rectify the other matters. We are in a tough spot and most of the work is done. We are waiting for the funds and yet the people reprimand us. Multiple trade unions are gearing up to launch a joint protest against the unjust tax regime. The decision was reached following talks at the Mahavali Centre. University teachers as well as trade unions linked to water supply, petroleum, electricity and ports attended this meeting. We have declared a black week from the 22nd of February and we will review this again on the 1st of March. Thereafter, we will launch a nationwide strike. We demand the unjust tax regime be withdrawn. If the government does not comply, we will take strict action. We will engage in regional strikes from the 22nd in Anuradhapura, Kandy, Kurunagala, Colombo, Kalutara, Gampaha and Matara. It will be a black day. If the government does not withdraw the unjust tax, we will take strict action. We demand the government solve the issues immediately. If not, come next week, there will be a massive trade union action. It would lead to a closure of the country. Fourth Court Magistrate Tirunagamage ordered to release former President Secretary Lalit Thirutunga and former Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral on personal bails of 1 million rupees each. The order was given when the uh, case filed by Venerable Tineyavala Palitathera with regard to the illegal payment of 6.5 million US dollars by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka to US lobbyist Imad Zuberi in 2014 was taken up. The summons issued on Virathunga and Cabral on the 26th of January were lifted as both suspects appeared in court on Friday. They were ordered by the magistrate to inform the court if they are travelling overseas. Counsel noted that the summons issued by the court have not been received by their clients. However, after being made aware of the court date by the media, their clients decided to voluntarily appear in the court. <laughs> Was there a tariff hike during my tenure? You are aware, so why ask me again? After I stepped down, the tariff was increased once and then another time. Are you happy now?
We will be filling more cases against all public officials who misappropriated public funds. The final destination is the court and the people want justice. The Sri of Sri Lanka is one of the most valuable resources that we own. News first revealed information that has come to light that a foreign state is pressuring the Sri Lankan government to take over the delimination rights to map out the Sea of Sri Lanka. In response to this, the Minister of Justice Vijayadasa Rajapaksa says that Sri Lanka will not give in to any foreign powers. Sea of Sri Lanka Naval charts are essential when it comes to navigation at sea. News first pointed out earlier the opportunity to earn a huge amount of foreign income by properly preparing these naval charts of the Sea of Sri Lanka and formally issuing them for international navigation activities. However, this methodology is not yet properly carried out in Sri Lanka. This not only puts Sri Lanka's sovereignty at risk, but also deprives us of access to vital data systems. Because we did not exercise the right that we had, two foreign nations have drawn up these naval charts and are profiting off this. NARA has been provided some form of authority for this as well. However, we have realized that the agency does not have the facilities to successfully carry out the task. Therefore, the cabinet appointed a special cabinet subcommittee on this matter and realized that our Navy has the ability, knowledge, expertise and skills to successfully complete this task. Accordingly, we decided to start a separate service for coastal surveying and map preparation. We have given the lead to the Navy for this. At least a thousand million rupees have been lost per year because we have not done it formally. Finally, the draft will be handed over to the legal draftsman and we will finalize this in the following week. After presenting it to the cabinet and gazetting it, I believe we can do this within the month of March. Sea of Sri Lanka. News first with the people. The Sri Lanka Air Force is preparing to celebrate 72 years of service to the nation. From tonight, we take a look at the key elements of the eyes and the skies. News first, Pahan Chandramal files this report. Sri Lankan Sky Warriors. Cessna 150 PT6 Kate one Guan Yana Hamudavan Sri Lanka Navika Hamudavan Sri Lanka Guan Hamudave China Guan The Chinese manufactured PT-6 aircraft is ready. The pilot is a rookie. The pilot who just concluded his training is preparing for his first flight. The technical officer and engineers concluded their inspection. The pilot can now inspect the aircraft and take to the skies. A special welcome is accorded to a rookie pilot by the Sri Lankan Air Force after his successful maiden flight. This practice is a long-standing tradition at the Sri Lanka Air Force. 
A Chinese manufactured K8 jet is used to train fighter pilots at this training wing. The ability to make quick decisions, accurate targeting skills are among the skills that are developed in prospective fighter pilots here. All of these training programs are being conducted at number one flying training wing at the China Bay base to produce pilots for the Sri Lankan Air Force that defend the skies of Sri Lanka. This is the ancestral home of all fighter pilots of the Sri Lanka Air Force. The primary duty is to provide pilots with basic training and flight training. Since 1951, we have used various types of aircraft to train a total of 380 pilots. Anyone who is passionate about becoming a pilot can join our flying training wing and gain a professional qualification and become a qualified pilot in the country. This flying training school was accorded presidential honours in the year 2000 for their impeccable record and yeoman service to the nation. Tomorrow on Sri Lanka Sky Warriors, the Watchmen of the Sky. Sri Lankan Sky Warriors. Only 400 million rupees is required to print ballot papers for the local government election. The failure by the government to provide this sum of money has jeopardized the sovereignty of the people and democracy in Sri Lanka. In the meantime, this is a revelation about how over 700 million of Sri Lankan taxpayers' rupees was wasted. Crude oil is currently being purchased through unsolicited bids. According to officials, this situation came about as international suppliers are no longer accepting letters of credit from Sri Lanka due to the forex crisis. However, these unsolicited bids leave room for massive corruption. A ship carrying crude oil needed for our refinery docked at the Colombo port on the 20th of November last year. The unloading of the crude oil ended on the 17th of December 2022. The accepted amount of outturn loss or the amount of crude oil that can go to waste during the unloading of the stock of crude oil is 0.3% of the total crude oil stock. However, the outturn loss of the crude oil that was unloaded from the ship that docked at the Colombo port on the 20th of November was 1.891%. An outturn loss of 1.891% of the stock of crude oil adds up to a total of 13,232 barrels of crude oil. The issue is that a payment has been made even for the 13,232 barrels of crude oil that were wasted. According to internal reports of the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, the supplier had demanded for a sum of 1,104,380 US dollars for the outturn loss of the crude oil shipment. At the current rupee to US dollar exchange rate, this adds up to a total of 400 million Sri Lankan rupees. The issue does not stop there. Another ship carrying crude oil from the same supplier docked at the Colombo port on the 28th of November last year and the unloading of the stock of crude oil concluded on the 15th of January this year. The outturn loss of this crude oil shipment was 1.734%, which adds up to a total of 12,551 barrels of crude oil that was wasted when this ship was unloaded. The same supplier had demanded for 1,021,291 US dollars and 63 cents for the outturn loss of this crude oil shipment. At the current exchange rate, this adds up to a total of over 370 million rupees. The outturn loss of the two crude oil shipments were calculated by two independent companies. When we inquired on the matter from the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation, an official at the CPC said that an internal audit on the matter is being conducted. The official pointed out that investigations are being conducted as to if the crude oil was wasted due to an issue in the pipelines or the tanks holding the crude oil. Is it fair for the government to claim that they cannot provide 400 million rupees to print ballot papers to protect the sovereignty of the general public while blatantly wasting over 770 million rupees like this? 
One of the main reasons for the massive electricity tariff hike was to cover up the costs related to the purchase of fuel and coal. Is it fair to force the people to shoulder the cost of this over 770 million rupees that was wasted? Shouldn't an investigation into the matter be conducted immediately to get to the bottom of this? Minister of Power and Energy, this is over to you. The citizens of the struggle movement protested opposite the Ministry of Power and Energy against the unjust electricity tariff hike. The group set fire to the electricity bills and stressed that they would not make the payments. Minister Kanchana shamelessly says he will have to increase electricity tariffs to provide an around-the-clock power supply. You are charging us in rupees, not dollars. Where are you getting the dollars to import coal? We urge the people not to pay their bills. The day the people lose their patience with this government is not far away. The group requested for an opportunity to meet with the Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijay Sekara. However, that request was shot down. The Alliance of Trade Unions and Mass Organizations stressed that the people must refrain from paying the unjust electricity tariffs. The power now lies with the people to say that they will not pay the bill unless relief is provided. The people must reach an understanding over this. That is the new struggle. On the other hand, the right to vote is being taken away. The people must unite against this. The Mahasangha held a meeting with trade unions and civil groups in Rajagiriya on the electricity tariff hike. Since August last year, the electricity tariff was increased by 300%. Again, such a backdrop, another 66% hike is unbearable. This is a decision taken by the Minister of Power and Energy and the President alone. The Ranil Vijay Sekara agenda is to take from the poor and fund the rich. We invite the whole of Sri Lanka to say no to this unjust hike and not to pay this tariff. This is to show that it is impossible to pay the tariff. This is the public decision. Taking a look at another one of our election related stories. Convening a media briefing, the police responded to the government printer's claims of lack of security provided by the police to print ballot papers. The police said that they will provide the security needed as and when the government printers begins the printing of ballot papers. Right now, the printing of ballot papers have been hampered due to a shortage of funds. We will provide the security needed after the government printer begins the printing of ballot papers. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says the Samagi Jana Balavegya is a party that can rebuild the nation. The opposition leader addressed a public meeting in Walapane to muster support for the local government election. We must expand the economy of this country by increasing electricity bills, taxes, the price of goods, fuel, gas and kerosene. This government is working towards destroying the economy. The Samagi Jana Balavegya is the only party with the economic plan, vision, leadership and team necessary to bring the country out of this crisis. The Samagi Jana Balavegya is the only answer. You all must work believing that the local government election will be conducted on the 9th. Various people try to cause various problems. They are doing this because they fear the massive wave of support the SJB enjoys. A group of students from the CPM Faith School in Wattala visited the News First newsroom today. About 75 students ranging from 4th to 6th grades from CPM Faith School in Wattala visited the News First newsroom to get an understanding of news reporting. Anyone wants to read it? Can you see it? 
During their visit, News First staff members provided them with a practical experience on news broadcasting. Do you want to be at the MP Centre? Ocean Aragon, tradition, health, all media briefing in Kurunagala today. Welcome to the news. I am Sharon Rachel speaking. Uh, we had a great time looking at the procedures, how the news is read live on TV and on news FMs. So it was a, overall a great exciting experience for our students and we have uh, identified aspiring students who are interested to come here and work in the future as well. So I think it's a great opportunity given by News First to us. Gamanda continue to their work towards ensuring a better future for Sri Lanka by investing in young Sri Lankans. Books and other stationary items were distributed among the students at the Navate Gama Rambukkaniya Gama Primary School in the Putlam district. The total number of students receiving their education at the Navagattegama Ramakandayayagama Primary School in the Puttalam district is 66. The school is located in a remote village and the students here face untold difficulties in pursuing their education. Gamedda today distributed books and other stationary equipment to students at this school. A group including Roshini Mutumala residing in New Zealand supported this project. <laughs> Moving on to news overseas, Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko said he would only order his troops to fight alongside ally Russia if another country launches an attack against Belarus. Belarus's President Alexander Lukashenko, who has repeatedly denied claims from Kiev and the West that his country could be dragged further into the war in Ukraine on the side of Moscow, said he planned to meet Russian President Vladimir Putin on Friday. Foreign media quoting Lukashenko reported, quote, I am ready to fight with the Russians from the territory of Belarus in only one case, if even one soldier comes onto the territory of Belarus to kill my people, unquote. He added, quote, if they commit aggression against Belarus, the response will be the most severe and the war will take on a completely different nature." Unquote. Russia last year launched its failed offensive on the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv from Belarus. And with that we wrap up tonight's edition of Primetime News. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.